Here they are. Centrica. We switched the accent back Th to where it came from. Thanks, Hasso. Hello, my name is Wayne Johncock. I'm from Centrica. We are the largest utility in the United Kingdom. And today I wanted to tell you and take you through some of the examples that we've been working with SAP on HANA. I must say hello to our friends back in the United Kingdom. SAP World Tour is taking place at Twickenham Rugby Stadium in London. So hello London from Orlando. At Centrica, we have in the vicinity of 18 million residential accounts, both gas and electricity. We have 1 million billion accounts, uh, one, 1 million business accounts. We bill residential customers once every three months. And overall, we manage 75 million metre reads through, through each year. We've got smart metering coming along. So what happens with smart metering? We will get metre reads at a much more frequent value. For electricity, it'll be once every 30 minutes. For gas, it'll be once a day. Our number of metre reads per year will go from 75 million to 120 billion metre reads per year. So that's mind-boggling within itself, 120 billion metre reads. There's going to be a lot of data that we have to deal with. Our business drivers are to understand our customers, to know what they want, to know what their needs are. With that much data, with the current standard technology, there's no chance of processing it. So luckily, we, we worked with SAP from an early stage. We've done the preliminary, preliminary uh, tests and, and works, and currently, uh, the results we get back are fantastic for us. If I can take you to the laptop, we've got a smart meter analytic tool here. So what this does, it takes the data, crunches it, and gives us back some details. With so many customers, we're the largest uh, single instance utility on, on an SAP system. We have so much data. If you have a look at what we've got here, we need to segment our customers. So we've got this segmentation school, uh, tool. This particular one, we're looking at retail stores in London. We managed to understand what the breakup is, what the percentage use of power is for these customers, and we can go and segregate them further. So for instance, we've got things like pubs and bars, we've got department stores, we've got small um, businesses here, and alone, just to do this profile shape on the right-hand side, takes a lot of processing. This, pro this profile shape, or the profile pattern, tells us what the, what the usage is of the business over a period of time. And that's incredibly important for us to understand this. Down the bottom, we have a scatter graph. So we've got the total power consumed, we've got the number of customers, and from an executive dashboard to look at this, straight away you can see what your high value, high volume customers are. You've got your low value, low volume down here. They may be a particular business uh, set. And you've got the scatter graph in between. And you can see how that data is changing as, you, as I move the mouse across. So this dashboard alone is a tremendous amount of processing behind it to give us this information. So taking that, how can I use that information in, in real life, in real, in real time? If Take a sales guy, for instance, one of our sales team. They'll have to take this information, and what we're actually doing with uh, the smart meter revolution, revolution, we're into energy efficiency, uh, we're into lowering the carbon footprint. We're actually telling customers to use less of our product. It's not a good business model. So what can we build on top of that? We build a service where we go and advise customers how to become more energy efficient. If I switch to the, to the iPad, What we've got here is a smart meter app. So I just loaded that smart meter app there. It takes, takes the data that we've worked with, and it has a look at the businesses we want to go and advise how to be more efficient in the use of energy. Here's a classic example. So I've taken the retail stores in London, which was what I just used before. Let's have a look at that. It comes up with a list of stores. And you can see them on the map there, just scattered around central London. If I take a look at one store in particular, the attributes I'm looking at are the, are the sales 
per square foot. So the stock we've got per square foot, what the opening day, what the opening hours on work days, what the opening hours on, on weekends. And this is quite important for us. We've got an expected value, so we've been able to crunch the data and find out what the expected usage is for this particular customer. And their actual usage in this case is higher. Hence, on the spectrum, on the energy efficiency spectrum, they're in the bottom 10%. So once we know that, we want to know what the reason for this is. So if we go and review it, in this particular case, the expected usage is the green line. The average usage at the top flow, it's consistent line. We're able to look at this and understand what the problem was. The customer was using more energy. And in this particular case, it was a bakery, and um, some ovens, an oven was left on over this period, which was one day. Let's go back and have a look at another store. Same type of thing in the bottom 10%, energy efficient, not good, perfect opportunity for us to sell an energy service. Go and have a review of what that is. The expected tracks the average. It's, you can't tell much from that. So have a look on the left-hand side again. We can do this hourly, we can do it by day, we can do it by month, we can do it by the type of day, we can do it by the temperature. If I have a look at the monthly usage, not much to tell there, but I can scroll back, and now I'm starting to hit May, April, March, and February. Can you see that the average usage, there's a much, much bigger difference between what the expected usage was? And that's another classic example where we can identify and sell an energy service to improve the energy efficiency of that particular customer. If I go back to the laptop, Thank you. Let's have a look at the energy efficiency scorecard. So that's what we did with businesses. How can we use it in the home? So again, like I said, Centric, we've got 18 million uh, domestic accounts. That's a huge number. For you in the home, how can you be more energy efficient? This particular customer, the actual against the expected, is brilliant. Up in the green side of the spectrum, they're a very energy efficient customer. We can use this, you can post something on Facebook to say you're energy efficient. We can also use this information to go down and do a rate comparison. So once we know what the usage is, we have a history. Again, to use HANA to go and crunch the numbers here, we can have a look and see what we would map or what we would put that customer on as a good tariff to save them money. So we can go through and do a billing simulation to find out what the values should be and suggest a tariff that the customer should go on to save money. So all this is working, all for the benefit of the customer to be on the right tariff, use energy efficiently, and it makes us, it makes us get closer to the, to the customer. Also here, uh, what is quite interesting, if I have a look on the scorecard just quickly, to go back and have a look at this particular customer. We can look at building types. This is in the HANA cloud, so I'm working in the HANA cloud. If you wanted to see how you compared to other customers in a 20 mile radius, we have it here. Let's make it 100 miles. Press enter, goes away, does the calculation, comes straight back. So you can benchmark yourself against similar households, similar consumers in your area. The ability to crunch this data quickly, to know more about our customer, as we heard yesterday, Centrica will get close to their customers, and SAP will get closer to the customers' customers. Back to you, Hessa. I have only one question. Why is he doing that? Why is he saving energy for me? Do you get more customers? You have only a finite amount of energy to distribute? If we do this, Bill, this means we sell HANA, the price is based on the size of the database, and then we come in with a consulting team to shrink it and get money and have to give money back? No. So you have to think about this. This is dangerous, what he does. <laughs> really dangerous when you apply this to our new project. Thank you very much. This is fantastic.